Hi there and welcome to Plant CEO. In today's episode I'd like to welcome Dr Guy Sandolovsky and Shiv Sivakumar, the co-founders of Omni Pet Foods. Normally we're recording over Zoom but today it's great to have you both here in person. Yeah, agreed. (laughs) So the UK is a nation of dog lovers. What's the problem with pet food today? You're absolutely right and and, I mean dogs are uh, really like members of the family. We humanize them, they're like children, and that's great. And the same with my dog, you know, I've got a 13 year old black Labrador and, and, you know, I treat him so well and I always like to give him the best in life. But unfortunately, as a dog parent, if you go and look for food for your dog, uh, the choice is not that great when it comes to health, right? So uh, most dog food is actually made from processed meat and we're not talking about you know fillets of beef you know sirloin steak usually we're actually talking about animal leftovers and byproducts so the bits of the carcass that humans don't really want to eat themselves things like organs and bone meal feathers um, lard these are the kinds of things that actually end up getting repurposed into pet food And we know that more than half of dogs in the UK are suffering due to obesity. So all sorts of things from joint problems to uh, breathing issues or exercise intolerance. And we also know that one in three dogs will sadly pass away due to cancer. And when you take all of that and you think about the fact that there's ample data and evidence that in humans, processed meat causes both cancer and obesity, which is why humans try not to eat so much of it. It kind of doesn't gel, but actually that's what we feed dogs all the time. So that's the main problem, I think, in in the pet food category, is the fact that even though dog parents want to do the best for their dogs in terms of health, the options are very limited. So Shiv, what sort of environmental damage is being done today with pet food especially meat-based pet food that's being produced. Yeah, there's a lot of research that's coming out now that is addressing the actual environmental impact of pet food, which isn't really talked about. A lot of it it is talked about the meat industry as a whole, but a study conducted by UCLA showed that 25% of the environmental damage of the meat industry is associated with the pet food sector. And if pets as a whole uh, had their own country, they would rank fifth globally in terms of the meat that's consumed. If you have a medium-sized dog in in the UK, for instance, that has twice the environmental impact of an SUV. So when us across the country, so many households are doing everything they can to reduce their carbon emissions, it's unfortunate that one of the main polluters is actually their dog. Mm. And the solution doesn't have to be that you shouldn't have a dog. That's not right. Dogs bring so much joy and value in our lives, but there can be a more sustainable way to feed them that ends up making your dog one of the lowest emitting factors in your household. Mm, mm. And that's essentially what we're doing here. For sure. So what's your solution now um, to sort of combat this these issues that we've got with dog's health and, and the climate? Well, we're really excited um, to have developed a plant-powered dog food. Um, it's called Omni. I've actually got a bag here. Lovely. Um, for the benefit of the viewers. So... Um, essentially what we've done with this product is um, we've put in human grade ingredients so we're not using animal byproducts or leftovers we're using the kinds of things that humans like to eat like sweet potatoes lentils brown rice pumpkin even blueberries and we've got this recipe that just has all the good stuff that dogs need to thrive so We're actually uh, 30% protein, uh, which is more than most meat-based dog food on the market. Uh, We're low in fat, so we've got 9% fat, and none of it's animal fats, all healthy plant fat, relatively healthy plant-based fats. Mm. Um, The fiber content is 3%, so it's really digestible for dogs. And what we did with Omni is we made some food and sent it out to 250 dog parents in the UK. And what we ask them is just for their honest and candid feedback. Mm. You know, do your dogs like the food? Um, how are they on it? How are their toilets? All that kind of thing. Right. And we were just blown away, weren't we, with, with the results. So I think 91% of the dog parents in the trial said that their dogs loved Omni. Mm. And lots of them were saying that their dogs were preferring it to the meat-based food. Which is so great because 
it's one thing having a food that's healthier and better for the planet. But if your dog doesn't love it, you're very unlikely to stick with it. Mm. So we're really proud that we've got this product that's not only healthier, not only better for the planet, but it's just delicious, you know, and dogs love it. So that, that's our solution. Yeah. And how would you say um, it compares to a traditional um, meat based product, especially, say, on, on the protein level? Yeah. So good question. I mean, for dogs, one of the most important um, macronutrients in the diet is protein. Yeah. Um, but it's also the most expensive. So it's the one that um, you tend to find is um, lower in the cheaper brands, essentially. Um, so what we did is we made sure it was the focus of ours. So we have a proprietary plant powered protein blend and all in all it's 30% protein. Yeah. Which so, is, sounds very high. Yeah. It's great. Uh, it's great. Even if you're looking at normal, you know, products for humans. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. It is high. Yeah. Um, so kind of the minimum requirement for a dog food, according to FEDIAF um, standards is 18%. Okay. So we knew that, there would be skeptics out there, you know, is plant-based going to be okay for dogs? Is there enough protein in there? So you really wanted to hit that nail on the head and make sure that we didn't just have the minimum amount, but we actually surpassed it. Right. Um, and we made sure that we didn't just use one protein source. So mm. our proprietary blend has, um, you know, protein from, from pea protein, potato protein, uh, soya, yeast, microalgae, and together, the amino acid profile, which is all the little building blocks that make up a protein, is nutritionally complete. So it has everything that a dog needs. Yeah. So if you're comparing like some of the well-known brands um, compared to your products, what sort of protein levels are they at? So it, it varies. So it, yeah, when you look at a lot of the, the brands in the market, yeah. um, we actually surpass the protein level of many of the leading brands that you might pick up in the supermarket. Okay. Some can be very low. They very much just meet the minimum um, requirement of 18%. Right. Um, but we go far beyond that and give them ex exactly what they need to thrive. And you can do that on a plant-based diet. And there are some restrictions actually on why you can't do that on a meat-based diet. I think you can talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, so um, there are. So... The trouble is, if you just use meat as the protein source, yeah. um, if you pack in too much meat, you start to um, disrupt the calcium-phosphorus ratio. Um, and therefore, you know, pet food products that have meat need to actually make sure that there's other ingredients in there that aren't meat so that dogs don't get that ratio um, in, you know, yeah. taken out of equilibrium. Yeah. So is that then going back to, you know, the bone density and the problems within getting, especially with some of the larger dogs, yeah. getting cancer in their bones because of that, or is yeah. that not connected with that? So, so I don't, I don't think it's 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 necessarily um, you know calcium phosphorus and cancer, but but calcium and phosphorus are essential uh, minerals that dogs need for all sorts of functions. You know, like uh, bone development, uh, immune function mobility, um, all these things, bone density. So yeah. um, I don't think there's any evidence that, you know, that ratio being disrupted causes cancer. But we know that if, if dogs, you know, do have too much or too little calcium or phosphorus, they can become really poorly. And that's why some of the, the meat-based pet foods on the market aren't able to ramp up their protein. So, so actually industry averages around kind of 20 to 24%. Mm. And, you know, we're talking, you know, big brands like Lily's Kitchen, Bun, some of the, some of the very well-known brands, actually their protein content is relatively low compared to ours. Yeah. And we can ramp it up because we don't have this issue of calcium phosphorus. Okay. And is there a difference between, you know, the kibble versus the wet uh, food uh, in terms of that protein content? Yeah, it's a great question. Lots of, lots of my clients, you know, yeah. ask me, should I go for wet food or dry food? Yeah. Nutritionally they're offering you the same thing. You know, okay. if, you're, if, if you're feeding your dog a wet food diet and you're feeding your dog a dry food diet, um, you can get the same protein, fiber, vit vitamins and minerals, mm. you know, from both. But one advantage of, of dry food is that it's kind of crunchy. Mm. Um, and, you know, as you know, 
brushing a dog's teeth isn't always that straightforward. Mm. Um, not all dogs enjoy the process of having their teeth brushed mm. and actually getting to some of the, the back teeth and things can be, you know, just quite tricky mm. for, for dog parents. So if you choose a dry food that's crunchy, that food is actually mechanically removing a lot of the plaque buildup on the teeth. Got it, right. If you think about it, if they're eating it, you know, two or three times a day, yeah. it's that constant grinding of, of all that plaque on the teeth. And, and there's evidence to show that actually dogs that eat dry food have better dental and oral health and less frequently need to go to the vet to have, for example, and that general anesthetic to have their teeth cleaned. Mm. So, so that's a okay. great bonus. But, yeah, but nutritionally, yeah. you, can get, you can get best from both. Yeah, of yeah. So educate me on the, you know, hypoallergenic types of dog food. I don't know enough about that topic, but yeah, I, I guess you get different types that will, you know, if, especially if there's you know, smaller dogs, if I have allergies, etc. Tell me about that and, and how is yours in relation to that? So I'm glad you asked because, you know, um, allergic disease is one of the most common issues that dogs suffer from. So it, it, it's, it's, it affects their skin. So, you know, red, itchy skin, hair loss, but it also affects their gastrointestinal system, so their tummy. So, you know, lots of dogs, you know, get loose stools or wind or gas and all these things. And, mm. and very often it's related to food intolerances or food allergies. Mm. And the most common cause of that in mm. most dogs is actually the meat protein. Right. So dogs become somewhat intolerant or allergic to, for example, chicken or beef or lamb or a lot of the common meat proteins that you find in in pet food yeah and i guess the dogs would be you know if there were still a load of them in the wild which are nearest mm -hmm. ancestors are wolves but they wouldn't be chasing down a cow or a lamb or you know they'll be after smaller animals right if they were going to eat meat so I, I guess like genetically they're not built to eat those animals yeah i mean dogs have evolved right from yeah. their wild ancestors they're now domesticated right. and, and right. over like tens of thousands of years dogs have evolved eating essentially the leftovers and scraps of their caregivers yeah who have been humans yeah so humans don't eat kind of chunks of raw meat they eat a varied diet and they give those leftovers to dogs yeah. and over time dogs have become really really good at pulling out nutrients from all sorts of sources including plant-based sources okay you know so um I'm just trying to remember your initial question now. <laughs> yeah, the uh, allergy side. Oh, yes. but yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, on the allergies, yeah. um, just to give you an overview of of what's on the market. So, most hypoallergenic dog foods try to use a, a novel protein source. Mm. So, uh, a protein that the dog's never seen before. But that's really hard because a lot of the commercial dog food on the market it might say chicken or beef on the label but there might be 5% pork in there, or there might be deer or all sorts of animal oh, wow. protein that okay. doesn't actually even need to be declared by law as long as they declare, you know, the one, that, the one that's on the label. So, so there's that. Mm. And what a lot of the hypoallergenic dog foods are, that they're either treating the meat protein, so they kind of hydrolyze the protein, um, which is a chemical process in which um, the, the protein is, is chemically treated so that the dog's immune system doesn't recognize it as meat protein. Yeah. Or, you know, in, in the case of Omni, it's just doesn't have the meat protein. Exactly, that, yeah. That seems like the most obvious solution, mm. really. If dogs are allergic or they can't tolerate something, yeah. just cut it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that's what's great. And, and, and Omni, our diet, you know, it's naturally hypoallergenic um, and dogs love eating it. Um, you know, it's not bland like some of the hypoallergenic foods out there. Um, so, so yeah, so we're really excited about the potential of this mm. food, especially in the veterinary setting for dogs that have allergies. It's yeah. also interesting what you were talking about, mm. the beef and um, how that's definitely not yeah. something a dog is going to be hunting down in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of that is marketing that's been done by major pet food companies for us to believe that this is something they would naturally be um, utilizing when a lot of their food, you know, it might say beef. But you only need to have four percent beef in there in mm. order for it to be called beef. Exactly. And a lot of um, major pet food brands actually do use a lot of plant-based ingredients in their food, but very low quality fillers that don't actually provide much nutrition. Yeah. Um, so that's how they can get away with some of the yeah. Of the, of the, so of what, what are the fillers that they're using? Some of these companies. It's usually things like corn and wheat, basically. Low yeah. Cost, very low very nutrition. low cost. Exactly. Uh, that they can get hold of those. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing to say is, you know. Uh, lots of clients say to me, oh, I've heard that feeding raw is 
is a good thing to do. So raw meat, and it's become a bit of a craze in recent years. Mm. Uh, and as vets, we you know we we we're there to give information so that you know dog parents can make informed decisions about what they choose to feed. Mm. Um, and what we always say to them is, well, you know, cooking meat is really essential to kill some of these life-threatening bacteria like E. coli, salmonella, and parasites that unfortunately can and do contaminate raw meat products. So we're always really cautious about endorsing raw meat. Mm. And, and, and the thing is, it's not just dogs that can get sick from these bugs, but it's people in the household, you know. So if there's kids touching the dogs or, you know, other family members that, that maybe aren't, you know, well or have got immune issues, it's, it's actually quite risky, you yeah, know. So yeah. for us, I thought about it that way, actually, as well. There was actually a report that came out that the next biggest concern for a, a global sort of pandemic can yeah. actually come from raw dog food just because you have raw, raw meat in the household. No way. And that is, can become resistant to, you know, antibiotics, etc. And that's clearly not something we want to happen again. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So. Yeah, and, and, and dogs, you know, you'd be amazed how mm. many dogs, if you, you know, give them a piece, a slab of raw meat, they don't know what to do with it. You really? Know, they'll just sniff it and then they'll walk yeah, off. <laughs> exactly. Like they're not, they've, they've evolved, you know, they're like yeah. us, they eat cooked food. They like, you know, flavors and they don't, you know, so many dogs, you know, if you put a, a, a raw steak in front of a Chihuahua or a West Highland Terrier or all sorts, of course, there are some dogs that are used to eating raw meat, but so many aren't and so many literally wouldn't know what to do with it and they would just sniff it and walk away. So yeah. I think there's this misconception, like she was saying, like this marketing kind of, ploy that dogs are wolves they're wild animals mm. they need you know to hunt and but they're not they're domesticated they're, they're domesticated. pets which is great because we yeah. get to keep them in our houses and our yeah. kids can play with them we can cuddle up with them so. and, and it's really important to feed a diet that's appropriate to the species or that this is a dog and okay. we really take it back to we don't want to feed a wolf's food to a dog because no. that's what causes a lot of problems and that's what's been going on a lot in the major brands that we see right we, we actually look at okay this is what a dog actually needs in terms of nutrition the, here is all the all the ingredients and all the nutrition you can get from plant-based ingredients it's completely accredited it's completely validated by veterinary scientists and and by the regulators as well and you know this is species appropriate for what they need mm. and to, not and what they need them but also what, what's great for them to thrive and live a long life as well so for example i have a puppy um, who, which I had in lockdown as well. And he's, and he's been on a plant-based diet all the way through, had multiple vet checks all the way through as well. Mm. Extremely lively, extremely yeah. healthy dog. Yeah. And that's a very important stage in their development as well. Yeah. So it's about feeding the diet that's appropriate for them based on what they need and what they need to, to grow well and strong and healthy and not about the marketing ploys about, oh, I think my dog's a wolf. Because if you feed a dog like a wolf, it's not yeah. going to end up great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so what's your opinion on cell-based meat at this stage of your company, I guess? But like if they're creating specific types of meat, and I'm not referring to maybe like the beef or the chicken or lamb, mm -hmm. but say if they are, say, creating rabbit, for example, mm -hmm. but in a clean environment, um, is is that still harmful for them, do you think? Or what, what's your opinion in general? Well, we're really excited about the developments that are happening in the cell-based meat, meat space. We're keeping a very close eye to it. We have sort of investors, yeah. et cetera, from that, uh, from that yeah. arena as well. Yeah. We see great potential for that in the cat market. Um, because, or just for cats in general, they, the science shows that they're carnivores. They need to get their um, yeah. sort of nutrition from meat-based sources. This is where we see a lot of great potential. It is really far away, though. Um, I know there are some developments that are happening uh, even in pet food and in cell-based meat as well. But in order for that to be economical, for, for to feed the masses it, and to have a real impact, it is still several years away. Yeah. And we need a solution now. There is a lot of things that we need to get right right now. Yes. And that is where plant-based is a great solution because it's a solution that's available right now that everybody can take and that will have a massive impact on sustainability but also on health as well. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, the only thing I'd add to that just on mm. cell-based meat is... You know, one great promise, you know, for the future, for cat food, um, we know that cats are obligate carnivores, um, is really the fact that you don't need to kill lots of animals to create cell-based meat. And that's the beauty of it. You take a small sample and you grow cells in the lab. And that's great because, mm. you know, how many billions of animals are slaughtered unnecessarily right now? Totally. So that's one thing. The other good thing about cell-based meat is you can grow 
the bit of the meat that's healthiest, so the leanest, can use you know cells that don't have fat, for example. That's we right, know yeah. this huge yeah. obesity pandemic. Right. So you can literally get the leanest bit of meat without harming animals. You know, grown in, in the future will be possible to, to do that in a really sustainable way. You know, with a really small carbon footprint. Yes, you know, we we're happy and we endorse that movement and mm. we, we really see the potential for it. But like you've said, right now it's mm. so far off. And with dogs, it's not even necessary because they can thrive and do thrive on plant based diets. Yeah, which is why we're just so focused on that for dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you think obviously with cats they have different needs in terms of the amount of amino acids? But do you think also like the way they've been interacting with humans hasn't been quite the same with dogs, right? Mm-hmm. So I think with with humans they will they're happy to eat whatever they're given in a, in a way. They retain more of their independence. The cats, um, they do, don't they? The <laughs> and you see that <laughs> yeah, if you, if you, yeah, if you sure. compare like um, cats' relationships yeah. compared to like a dog's relationships, right, with, right, with, the, with their uh, caretaker, and it, it is slightly different. And cats yeah. do maintain a bit more of a distance to us compared to dogs who. Uh, just yeah, but you know, it, and that is reflected in. Yeah, I, I think it's fascinating when a cat, like, you know, tracks down a, a mouse <laughs> or a pigeon and brings it back to the owner's house. Say, look what I've done, and, and they don't know what to do with it afterwards. They yeah. they, it's like the joy of the chase, but to bring back some evidence of contribution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But dogs yeah. aren't really the same like that, are they? Yeah, dogs prefer a squeaky toy. Yeah. They yeah. prefer, you know, cuddles yeah. and. You know, dogs will stare at you, you know, if you're, you know, eating something like a biscuit or a piece of cake, they'll be right by your side at the, you know, kitchen table hoping that you give, you know, yeah, that's, that's different. You know, dogs yeah. are just so much more kind of um, evolved alongside us in terms yeah. of how we eat and what we find tasty. And they yeah, find I mean, I would say they're, they're both, you know, can be very emotional, right? I mean, even last night, uh, I was watching this uh, a video, uh, you know, with this dog watching Lion King. And then you could see the dog getting really agitated and emotional. And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's one for a, for a cat. <laughs> and the cat did the same thing. She, like, she got up and she would look, look at the, you know, the, the screen and figure out like, what's, what's going on. So they, they do have the same, you know, I guess, emotional intelligence to recognise and interact in that way. And it's like, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, dogs are phenomenal creatures yeah they they do they have incredible emotional intelligence they know when they're when their you know dog parent is feeling down when they're happy and they share in that emotion you know they yeah they look for uh, giving affection when they need to and they they kind of run around and they, they just feed off of all of you know the human's energy mm-hmm. um and they're, they're very intelligent you know they mm. understand they learn that's why that you can train dogs to do all kinds of jobs like mm you know, work for the police, for the army, helping, you know, the visually impaired. It's because they're incredibly intelligent animals. Totally. So can you tell me how you guys met and uh, what your, your backgrounds are, actually? <laughs> um, so we started, so my background before, prior to this was uh, I was working in the finance space and I was, you know, really, that, that wasn't really what I wanted to do um, long, long, long term. I have a dog, I was very passionate about wanting to do something in the animal space. I've always loved animals and uh, wanted to also do something that was genuinely impactful. I feel the corporate world just in general is very headed towards um, not the way I want to see the world develop. I yeah. want to see the world develop in a way that was more sustainable, more friendly, more um, just lighter in general. And I felt the pet food was an area that could have a real impact in that way. And I, you know, really wanted to do something in the food space. But and that's the same time that I met Guy, and um, we just really gelled along. So we were introduced by a mutual friend who okay. um, knew that we were both wanting to do something in the pet food space that was really impactful. He's like, yeah. will you both go on about this? And then he yeah. just put us in touch. And then we got talking and then his passion for animals really came through and how much he cared about sort of dog health and how unsatisfied he was with the state of dog health in general. 
and uh, and I was blown away as well because I was I was aware that it wasn't great, but I didn't know it was as bad as it was. Mm. And that's when we put our heads together and started thinking about what we could do. I it, it, if looking back in my own family history, so my, my, my family is originally from from Sri Lanka, mm. and we are, we're a plant based society. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, and our dogs were you know before commercial pet food was a thing, they were eating whatever was left over from our food, and that was plant based food. Right. And these dogs was very normal for dogs to live to like 14, 16 years of age. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, dogs live on average eight to eleven years of age. Yeah. And we thought, well, hold on, there's a divide. What's yeah, going totally. On? Yeah. And then you did all your research. <laughs> All the, all the uh, talking to like nutritionists from Nottingham University, from some of the top professionals that we brought in as well to really see what could be done, and that's when we just, we we felt that plant based was actually not just a great sustainable solution; it's also a much healthier solution for dogs as well. And that's when we realised, you know, and we were working really well together as well. Yeah, yeah we work, we work, we work together so well. We really gelled, and I suppose there's an element of luck in that as well. Mm. You know, um, just how well we 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 have kind of complemented each other in in the process but for me as well I mean I decided to become a vet you know um, because I absolutely love animals and um, and you know and and dogs for me are, are my world so my career is dedicated to dogs um, and and what I realized as a vet was yes you can help the animals you treat um, on a day-to-day basis but if you really you know want to have a big impact and improve the lives of animals, not just in your hospital, but all over the country and maybe further, you know, maybe in other countries and other continents. Actually, um, you can achieve that um, by moving a little bit out of clinical work and a little bit more towards bigger projects. So um, I could just see that so many of the problems I was seeing on a day-to-day basis were related to the poor quality of the diets that dogs were getting. I thought, right, this is an opportunity to really step outside, use all the knowledge and experience and develop a new kind of dog food, a new category that's just going to make dogs everywhere happier and healthier. And that's kind of how Omni was born, you know. Shiv, Shiv's that kind of the, the strategy behind it all, you know. He, he's worked out how to get the food, you know, from our warehouse to people's doorstep very quickly and, and he's great at that. And I think we just have this complementary skill set. Yeah, very good. Um, so in terms of vets, would you say you're quite unique in that your love for animals, but you also don't want to eat an animal, whereas other vets maybe would love and care for animals, but they're happy to eat another species of animal? Yeah, so there's definitely a contradiction, right? Yeah. You know, um, you spend years and years, you know, learning how to protect animals and treat them and make sure that they're happy and healthy and have excellent welfare. Yet so many vets will will eat meat, you know, and and support, you know, a sector that, you know, farms animals and slaughters them. And there is a there is a contradiction there. And it's it's uncomfortable, to be honest. Mm. Uh, And for me, you know, I, I, I went into this because I really wanted to feel good about you know, the way my own decisions um, and, and what I could bring to the sector. So what we've done together is we've made it easier for dog parents or other humans who don't want to eat animals or for their pets to eat animals. We've made it easier for them to actually have a credible solution where, you know, our food is made by vets. It is formulated by vets. It's credible. It's something that can be trusted. You're not compromising on your pet's health by choosing us. But, but there are vets, you know, there are lots of vets who kind of, you know, don't have an issue with that, you know, and they, they see that as, as normal to kind of um, all of the animal farming that happens and all the livestock farming. And, and, and you know, mm. that's, that's their opinion. Mm. And you think some of these vets came from that livestock farming? Is that why they maybe are happy to continue with that, you know, heritage and, and continue to, you know, eat meat? Yeah, so there's yeah. definitely, so there's... You know, as a vet student, Mm. you know, we visit abattoirs. We see where, you know, poultry come in and go out to Tesco's, you know, um, right from the farm, right end out into into product, you know, meat products. And Mm. we go to pig farms, um, you know, dairy units, um, all sorts, you know, we see the, I suppose, some of the less, you know, well-known kind of horrors of what happens in livestock farming systems. Mm. And there are plenty of vets who come from those backgrounds. You know, they grew up on farms and 
where you know that was that was where that's how they 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 learned about animals how they decided they wanted to become vets and for them that whole industry is very normal you know it's normal to to raise pigs and then slaughter them for me that that's that's just kind of how how they grew up and what they were exposed to but but for me it wasn't you know i grew up in a city i grew up in london mm. i was never really exposed to all of that until i went to vet school and really saw it when i found it truthfully kind of horrifying you know mm. just seeing the you know the realities of of these kind of farming systems you know animals are often kept in very cramped conditions they often have all sorts of you know problems on their feet because the you know the bedding on which they're on is wet and it's dirty and they they get sores um, of course farmers do their utmost to you know make sure that the welfare of the animals is is protected but mm. The reality is, it's it's an industry. You know, it's, yeah. it's they're being farmed for their meat. The meat has a value, and the more meat they can get, and the quicker, the more yeah. value. Yeah. Um. So that that just never sat right for me. So on the human uh, plant based side, a lot of companies are either talking about animal welfare, sustainability, personal health benefits that they'll gain by switching. What sort of marketing messages are you considering to use for your product? Yeah. So. Pet food is a really considered product. Um, people take a lot of time to think about what they want to feed their dog. It is something that they, it's one of the few areas they get to actually have a say and control mm. um, and it impacts their dog for the entirety of their life. So it's a very important decision to, um, to make. And it's very, and for us, we really focus on the health benefits of the plant-based diet because there really are a lot of benefits to not feeding your dog processed meat diet on a regular basis and switching more towards a plant-based diet full of clean ingredients that are human grade and full of nutrition and nourishment. So this is almost similar to how one might think about how they feed um, a baby. If you were to have a, a newborn baby, you would really think about what food you're giving them. So it's much similar in that regard compared to some of the other sort of plant-based brands who might be more sort of, you know, if you're talking about sort of fried chicken or something and you're making a plant-based equivalent, it can be a lot uh, more um, sort of bold in, in, in certain messages you make. But we have to, we, we take a lot more care in talking about the health benefits um, so that they can make a very informed decision um, about why you should move to a plant-based diet. Yeah. Um, one of the, in our research, it shows that 50% of consumers actually make their um, purchase decisions based on veterinary recommendations. And us being a vet-founded, vet-backed brand is one of the key things that we lead with as well, to say that this is completely safe, this is something that vets have looked at, veteran scientists have looked at and formulated themselves, so you can have that safety and knowledge that you're giving something really healthy mm. and also sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, well, we did our own research, didn't we, before we started, and we actually asked um, dog parents all over the UK, you know, what matters most to you about your dog's food? Is it that it's sustainable? Is it that it's healthy? Is it that, um, you know, it's cruelty free, all sorts of parameters. And, you know, the health factor came on top by a mile. You know, everybody wants the food to be sustainable and other things as well. But the priority is that it's healthy. Mm -hmm. so that's really why we emphasized making our food super healthy as well. Um, but I think, you know, one real kind of challenge with our marketing is going to be about really raising awareness that dogs don't actually need meat. Dogs are not carnivores, they're omnivores. They're like humans. And yes, there are humans that eat meat, but there are also humans that are vegan. And they live very long, happy, healthy lives. And our challenge and our mission is to kind of spread the word that actually it's the same for, for dogs. And there's just more and more evidence, scientific evidence, peer-reviewed studies that are coming out all the time just to kind of corroborate that and prove that that's the case. Mm -hmm. And something that you mentioned before is like when there's a lot of consideration that goes into purchasing the products, but how easy do you think it will be to get somebody to actually change? We're already seeing it. So we're, people are already switching over from meat-based brands that they were already feeding to plant-based because, and, and fundamentally, there's just more awareness that's already mm. happening in the market now. People are talking about plant-based food for dogs. Mm. We're not the only company. There are other companies as well, especially yeah. in America, yeah. where they are talking about um, plant-based diets and all the benefits that it's bringing to them from, from a health perspective and also from a sustainability perspective. So we're already seeing that people are switching over. What we do need is more of a bigger voice in, in um, to, to really go out there be out there sort of in, in the public. So one of the things that we're doing is building a community around our brand as well. Uh, and that's really important to us because we're very much a digitally native brand. 
but we really think like unlike other digital brands we don't want to just stay on online we want to do a lot of offline engagement as well so going to events where there are lots of pet parents really talking to them you know on the online channel people can just have a, an opinion and sort of stick to it mm. we found that when we go out to parks and to dog shows and start talking to dog parents and dog owners they engage with us and they're a lot more receptive to the to sort of the science and the evidence that we're putting forth towards them mm. and that's been a really great way for just brand ambassadors that we've organically been able to capture mm. just by being there and talking to these people so we're doing a lot around sort of um, community work so we're starting in london um, is a huge hub and really just working on um developing our brand in, in, in sort of these um, localities where there's a lot of dog parents and helping that spread. Yeah, and, and the other thing to add is we're not expecting the nation to suddenly make all their dogs vegan overnight, right? You know, um, new concepts take time. People need to do their own research. They need to kind of be comfortable with that. And we respect that. You know, we're here, you know, as a team of vets, a team of people that really love animals, love dogs. We're here to provide information and we've, also you know created a product that's just so great and we fully support dog parents who maybe want to continue feeding meat but maybe they want to go flexitarian and do you know lunches that are plant-based or breakfast that's plant-based even that is a huge contribution to you know dog health to you know sustainability for the planet and when what we found is when dog parents try our food when they see the joy that their dog experiences when they're eating our food it just becomes a no-brainer. Mm. I, we worked a lot on the taste as well of mm. our food because we realised that a lot of people have great intentions. They'll understand the science and they'll understand that it's great for the environment. But if your dog doesn't actually enjoy the food, they're not going to keep eating it. Yeah. Um, and this was a lot of problems that we saw in the existing brands. That, that Right. Made. So we spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, really making sure the taste was yeah. not just better than plant-based brands, was oh. really beating a lot of the existing meat-based brands as well. I would also say even the smell. Like, uh, yeah. So yeah. it actually smells like uh, traditional dog food. Yeah. Did you did you spend some time working that out as well? Yeah, I mean, so for dogs, yes, yeah, so usually <laughs> sensitive noses. Yeah, right. So, so for dogs, actually, one of the most important factors in the science of palatability, so the science of flavor, I suppose, for dogs, is smell, mm. olfaction, mm. Um, and what a lot of our um, customers say is. That food smells so good, I want to eat it. It smells like kettle chips. You know, it doesn't smell like traditional dog food. It smells like fresher. It smells like, you know, the kind of food that humans want to eat. And that's really kind of spot on because that's what we were set out to achieve. And, and, and yeah, you know, you, uh, you know we, we recently um, uh, brought some, some food to, to a friend of ours who has a dog. And you, even when you put the bag in, on the floor, before you open it, the dogs are already, you know, huddling around it, sniffing, investigating, what, what's this new thing, you know? Mm. And that's just great. You don't have to take our word for it. Our Instagram is full of the testimonials. From our <laughs> so you can go and see uh, dogs running circles around our food. So, yeah, cool. Uh, cool. There's the yeah. And <laughs> yeah. um, what sort of partnerships have you done in this space? I'm glad you asked that because, you know, one really important thing about Omni is the fact that we really want everyone to know that we are science-backed, that we are founded by a vet, that we have a team of vets that work behind the scenes to kind of get everything going, um, get the product perfect, answer customer queries. And as part of that, we're actually the first uh, plant-based dog food brand in the UK to be stocked in veterinary practices. So we're actually in Medivet. And they're um, huge, right? Yeah, so Medivet's one of the biggest yeah. uh, veterinary chains in, in the UK. But yeah. actually, we're also in Village Vet, okay. which is probably the other, you know, big one. Um, and that really just sends such a strong signal to the mm. market. It's, it's, okay, dogs are omnivores. Um, yeah. Can't just survive on uh, plant-based diets. They can thrive on them. Mm. And now the vets are are endorsing it, they're selling yeah, it. Right. You know, and that just sends such a strong signal to all those dog parents that want to do this, but they just want a little bit of reassurance that, okay, this is fine. Um, and now they're, they're getting that, mm. you know. We thought at the start that maybe there'll be a lot of resistance from the veterinary community mm. because of what we did. But what we actually found is that vets are actually very science-based. Mm. They're not emotion-driven. They actually, okay, show me the science. And we did, and we had conversations with them. And, and that's what 
led them to be convinced of what we were doing and now a lot of vets are endorsing what we're doing as well right right and that and that's the root of what we everything we're doing like you can take a lot of, we're trying to take demystify a lot of the marketing myths that are happening and take it back to the science and like really just focus on what a dog needs this is the nutrition that they need to do really well and we're delivering it and it's really sustainable as well and i think the key kind of thing to to mention about the whole veterinary slant is yeah you know, it comes back to the fact that dogs are overweight in this country. Dogs are suffering from allergies in this country. So many dogs have sensitive tummies with all sorts of toileting issues. Suddenly vets have a new product that they can offer their clients that's, you know, affordable, um, but also dogs love it and it's helpful for all these conditions. So we're low fat, you know, we're great for allergies and we're great for dogs that have sensitive tummies because um, the food's so highly digestible. Mm. So actually what we found is in addition to presenting vets with all the evidence, um, which of course a lot of them already know because they know that dogs are omnivores, mm. um, they're also just getting great feedback from, from the clients, you mm. know, from the clients coming in with their pets and they're telling them we love this food and so it's just, it's all kind of propagating itself. Yeah, great. And can you share some of those stories that you've heard from, from customers like, you know, from a known issue and then switching to your product and then, you know, what the outcome has been? Definitely. Um, So I think probably the most common bit of feedback we get is my dog's coat is so much more shiny, Mm. my dog's so much more energetic, but also, and it's, I know some people, you know, aren't comfortable talking about stools, but people say that, you know, toilets are they, you know, the odor's better. It's not right. smelly, easier to pick up. More, yeah, yeah. More consistent, better form. And, you know, as a dog parent, you know that that's a big part of having a dog is the toilet yeah. side of things. Yeah. It's probably because of the fiber, I would imagine, right? To, yeah. Well, probably don't want to talk about that too yeah. much, but yeah. Well, actually, it's, no, it's good that you, you mentioned fiber. So we're, our food is 3% fiber. So, oh, okay. So it's actually, you know, the same as the, the meat-based. Okay. And so that's another right. thing that people, oh, is there too much fiber in, in plant-based food? Well, no, you know, yeah. um, not necessarily. So, you know, on average, it's between two and four percent in the industry, and we're okay. at three percent. So, but you also need fiber also for humans to absorb protein. Uh, so it's helpful to have right the right amount of fiber, right? Yeah. I mean, we spent so much time looking at dogs, like uh, making sure our food goes really well all the way through right, to right. the point where when we were testing our product, yeah. we we asked customers to actually send pictures and be like, did is it all very good okay. at one point my our phones were filled with pictures of yeah, <laughs> adults so, so, where they rather strange, <laughs> rather strange. <laughs> well, because it was, we needed to make sure everything was perfect right and everything okay. was um flowing through as yes yeah, yeah. flowing through <laughs> indeed and, and we're you know as a vet as a vet you're used to people yeah showing and bringing in store samples and things. Yeah, but right but it's, it's it's you know I, i've got a personal story i don't say it a lot because you know, it's it's our business. Who's going to believe me, right? right? But for the you know sake of the interview, why not yes. just share it with you? So, um, so I have um, a thirteen-year-old black Labrador. His name's Bondi. Um, I don't have kids, but he is like my child. For you sure. know, he he means everything to me. I actually got him, you know, just before I started the vet school, and he's been with me the whole time in this whole journey. Um, sadly, he he became quite poorly a few years ago. He's he's got a a big growth in his abdomen um, and like all older dogs you know 13 year old Labrador they slow down you know sleeping a lot doesn't didn't want to play as much um, and he was really straining to go to the toilet um, because of the tumor and I think it was a bit sore and things mm. um, so for me I thought we were nearing the end you know as a vet you recognize when quality of life is deteriorating and mm. okay um, sadly, it's that time, you know, we mm. have to think about letting him go. That was round about the time that Omni was made, our first batch, our trial batch. And I just started feeding him the food. Mm. Um, and it's, it, it's not believable, really, but, you know, hand on heart, he turned around as a dog. I could not, I, I still cannot even explain why. So he became more energetic he was happier. He wanted to play again. Yeah. His toilets literally went back to normal. Yeah. I really cannot explain it. Yeah. They, no straining, just back to normal. And did you have the tumour removed? No. You, you couldn't have, it, no, it would have been no. too evasive. We, we didn't remove the tumour right. because it was so big. Right. 13 year old dog, such a big surgery. I just didn't want to put him through yeah. all of that 
and yeah. then it might have you know it might have spread and right right so i did it he still has the tumor yeah but is that tumor cancerous or so, so benign, benign. Yeah, it's okay, benign right. growth yeah. it's a benign growth but right. um but i was worried that if we you did the, all that surgery and there was a complication yeah or a new tumor came you know somewhere else yeah. i just thought at 13 i wasn't sure if that was the right decision for him yeah. Um, and and here's here's the craziest thing of it all. So we sold out. Our food sold out really quickly, mm. much quicker than we expected. Mm. Um, and so suddenly, Omni. I didn't have any Omni to give to give Bondi, my dog. Right. right. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just use another plant based dog food. Okay. There's a few others on the market. Right. Right. Um, I tried them, and he went straight back to his to because his, I thought maybe it's just the fact that it's plant based. You know, okay. maybe that's why he yeah, he's okay. better. But he went straight back. So what were you feeding uh, Bondi before? Do you know, I tried him on so many different foods. Uh, almost all of the foods you can imagine on the market. I was just desperate to find something that would kind of give him that pick-me-up that he just wasn't showing. Um, but in the end, um, what's crazy is when we run out of Omni, um, and I was trying all the other foods, and he went straight back, I thought, okay... Maybe he's just got worse, you know, maybe time's gone on and he's just got to that point where, you know, it doesn't matter what he's eating anymore. But we restocked, didn't we? Mm. And we got more food and I put him back on, on Omni. And now we're kind of, I don't know how many months in, six, nine months later, and he's still going strong. And mm. it's a story I tell my friends and my family, um, but it's not one that I've ever really come out with in the public. But I just yeah. think it's amazing. Yeah, it's always good to have these personal stories especially like in a way you've developed the product for him to some yeah, degree right yeah. and, he's, and, and you can see dogs right. doing well at both stages right because i right. have a puppy he has an older dog yeah, right. both doing incredibly well on plant-based yeah. diets at very important stages where they need nutrition to be very yeah right yeah yeah and for a puppy sure and also a senior dog their yeah. nutrition is very, very what breed important. is your dog then what's uh, your dog's name <laughs> my dog's name is leo and he's a uh, mix between a, a cocker spaniel and a poodle so he's a, a cocker poo okay right yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice nice <laughs> So, can you tell me about your investors? Absolutely. We're actually in the middle of a, a fundraiser at the moment. Uh, we were very lucky to have been incubated by two very leading plant-based incubators. Uh, one is ProVeg Incubator and another is uh, Brink. Um, yeah. ProVeg is in Berlin, Brink is in Hong Kong. Both we, fantastic, by the way. Fantastic incubators. They yeah. gave us a broad exposure and put us in very much in the international um, investor community mm -hmm. um, so that's been really helpful in kicking off our investment round yeah. they've invested themselves by the way was this the first plant based dog food company that yeah. they've invested in in or? both of those incubators okay. we were the first plant based uh, pet food company to okay. ever have been incubated by them um, so they were excited by that we were excited by that and there was a lot of, of, of learnings on, 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 on both of our sides as well um, and since then, we've uh, continued to raise from a multitude of investors, um, especially within um, the cultivated meat sector. We've had quite a lot of interest from there based on sort of the future pipeline of where we can go to as a business. And we've had a lot of interest from also the veterinary professionals. Um, so Brendan Robinson um, has been a, um, one of the founders of Village Vet, invested in us too. Yeah, which is so important. So Brendan's so well known in, in the veterinary sector. He basically started one of the biggest veterinary chains, like, like should have said, Village Vet in the UK. Um, came from a clinical background, you know, then turned into an entrepreneur and, and built this, you know, Village Vet is known for providing gold standard uh, healthcare for pets. Um, so it just sends such a strong signal to, to the community that the person who set up such a great chain of hospitals is now behind and backing Omni. So that's really great. And of course, you're supporting us as well, which we're, we're very grateful for. Um, and all of your expertise and this is a common theme so a lot of our angel investors are bringing their own kind of expertise and strategy to the business and it's really helping us to to grow and and just make Omni uh, as big a success as it can be. Yeah I mean I've got to thank my friend Ryan Bethencourt so if you're if you're watching Ryan thank you very much from Wild Earth you mentioned the US company so I've, I've been quite interested in this space and I'm really open to have more and more companies who are entering this area so yeah really happy to be supporting you and you know ryan did tell me about your company and uh told me the good work that you're doing and you you guys are super sharp so like super sharp guys who can make stuff happen so yeah i'm happy to be on board as well yeah no it's great and, and you know if we're successful which i'm confident we will be we will be taking animals out of the food chain you know 
And what can be better than that? You know, fewer animals slaughtered and then pets living happier, healthier lives, smaller impact on the environment, you know, looking after the planet. Um, so it's kind of win-win, you know. Great. So uh, can you tell me, obviously you've launched your Kibble product now. What plans do you have in terms of product roadmap? You know, there's other companies that are doing a lot around supplements, uh, etc., different types of uh, pet food, but yeah. Yeah, great question. So we have focused on dry food uh, to start with. Um, that was very intentional. So we're going to have the biggest impact if we change kind of the main meal that dogs are eating. And we know that kibble and dog biscuits are the most common um, part, the most common component that's fed to dogs in the UK. So, um, so far we've got a formulation that's specifically uh, made for puppies. So 12 months and under, and we have a, an adult formulation for adult dogs. And actually in the next few weeks, we're really excited to be launching our Omni Golden Years, which is actually specifically made for older dogs. Because of course their needs are slightly different. They need slightly fewer calories, a few extra bits for their joints and all that sort of thing. So that will be for dogs that are seven years plus. The next product we're going to be bringing out is uh, our functional treat. So we know that uh, dogs love treats. We know that dog parents love giving treats. But what we're doing differently is, well, first of all, we're making them from 100% plant-based ingredients. Mm. Um, so they're going to be fully vegan. But the other thing we're doing is we're um, putting extra bits in them to help dogs with all sorts of ailments. So we'll have a, a functional treat for dogs that have anxiety, for dogs that have kind of joint issues, for dogs that have allergies, for dogs that have sensitive tummies. So you're not just treating your dog, but you're actually helping them and making them healthier and happier. Um, following that? So, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. I was quite interested on uh, the anxiety side because a lot of the mm. dogs, especially ones that have been rescued, have been abused, and, and especially when they're first coming to a household. So I'm interested, can you explain a bit more about that and what you'll be using to, I guess, is it to calm the dog down more or? Yeah, yeah. so, so you're right. Yeah. Um, anxiety is a huge issue for so many dogs and yeah. their dog and their parents. So yeah. uh, all sorts of reasons behind that. So some dogs have separation anxiety, especially now with COVID, yeah. they've had their, you know, they've been with their parents all the time, their That's dog right, parents, yeah. all day, because, you know, we've been working from home. A yeah. lot of people have now gone into the office and suddenly, yeah. you know, these dogs are kind of wondering where everyone's gone, yeah. you know, and they're That's getting right. anxious. So, right. so there are actually lots of natural, kind of chemical-free, plant-based ingredients that we can add to the treats, okay. like lemon balm oil, things like that, okay. that just really help chamomile, that yeah. really help to just keep dogs calmer, but not in a... Uh, kind of drugging way it's very right. natural mm -hmm. um, and, and the same is true for other problems like joint problems mm. um, you know allergy issues there's all sorts of things that you can put in there to just help with those symptoms a bit like humans if we were going to have like a smoothie right um, that might give us an energy boost or right. might help with our immunity totally it's yeah. actually very much the same for dogs yeah. so, so so that's that's kind of um coming out um hopefully before the end of the year mm. right. and then um early next year we're going to be bringing out our wet food range okay. so it's a great opportunity to you know give variety to dogs so they're not just eating one thing all the time and what we're really excited about is you know using things like textured uh, soy protein and potato protein to make chunks that look like meat that taste like meat, but they're actually 100% plant-based. Which is very similar to what you see in the human food space as well. Right, okay. Replicating the texture and the look of it. So yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. And it's very much for the human eye, really, a lot of that as well, because okay. you know, it's the humans that are making... The purchase that's decision, that's obviously. The purchase yeah, yeah, decision. Yeah. So for a dog, you know, it doesn't right. make much of a distinction, but it does allow them to see that, you know, this is something that looks almost like... Yeah, that yeah. It isn't. Can you just tell me about the potato protein compared to... People would assume it's just carbs, but yeah, yeah. how much is yeah. that? Of course. So yeah. So there's a whole bunch of ingredients um, that contain carbohydrates, protein, fiber, all sorts of things, vitamins, minerals. The same is true for peas, sweet potatoes, all sorts of. So what you can do is you can take out the protein from these sources. So actually, when we're talking about potato protein, we're not have we don't have all the carbs in there. We just have the protein which is great because dogs, dogs absorb the, the protein. It has a great amino acid profile. And when you combine that protein with all the other proteins we have, you actually have a complete protein that's comparable to meat mm, okay. um, and as digestible. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's really exciting. And, and like she was saying, you know, you, we can make this look exactly like meat. Mm. Dogs will 
you know, enjoy it as much as meat, if not more. And dog parents will feel like they're giving their dogs meat as well. So actually, mm. the only difference is that no animals were slaughtered to make it. Yeah. You know, that's the only real difference. Other yeah. than that, nutritionally, it's the same. Taste-wise, it's the same. It's just mm. better for the planet and no animals were harmed. Yeah, totally. And where would you say is the long-term vision uh, of the company? Well, we, we really um, believe and uh, foresee that Omni will become the one-stop shop for you to get everything that your dog needs, but plant-based. So, you know, dry food, wet food, treats, supplements. You won't need to go anywhere else because everything your dog will need to be happy, to live a long, healthy life and thrive will be available from Omni. And, and that's the vision. And, and we, we also want to envision that the impact that we have, because a lot of why we started is to have a positive impact on health and on sustainability. We want to build the pet food company of the future. Mm. So our vision is that through all the work that we're doing, we do start to see a massive reduction in a lot of the problems that we address, whether it's obesity, cancer. And we also want to see that animals are taken out of the food chain and that they're definitely not going into the pet food chain. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we, we didn't touch on earlier was that mm -hmm. a lot of the meat industry actually relies on the pet food industry in order for it to function. To so be profitable, even, yeah. A lot of people mm -hmm. have switched away from meat, but they continue to feed meat to their mm -hmm. dogs. Mm -hmm. And that is still very much supporting the meat industry to continue to thrive. Mm -hmm. And we need to remove that. Right. And us doing all this work will actually help go, go a long way towards reducing that dependency and in itself taking the foundations out of the meat industry. Mm. Yeah, and I guess ultimately what we really envisage is a, a time when you know, dog parents will all have a bag of, of Omni in, in their house so that even if they are feeding a proportion of meat in the diet, because let's, let's be honest, we're not mm. going to convince everyone to go no. fully plant-based, right? That, that's, that's, gonna, that's not necessarily, not in our necessarily decade or lifetime, but, you know, never say never. But what we can do is even those people that want to continue feeding meat, we can get them to, to feed a proportion of plant-based. Mm. So our vision really would be that either you go fully plant-based, you're getting all those benefits, or you're getting some of them and you're going flexitarian. But ultimately, everyone will have some of that benefit by having some Omni. Yeah. And uh, finally, just about the name, uh, Omni. So I guess it's omnivores, uh, um, but I guess you could also take the first few letters and call it Om, <laughs> being the peaceful sign. Um, is that, I know you probably want to reconfirm that dogs aren't just carnivores, right? Is that the reason behind the name? Yeah, we really wanted to raise awareness around the fact that dogs are omnivores. Because still, you know, in 2021, most people still think dogs are carnivores and that they need meat. So that, that's probably the main reason we chose the name Omni. But Omni also means all in yes. Latin. Right. And kind of from what we've been saying, um, hopefully it comes across, we really want all dogs and all dog parents to join us on this mission because that's when we're going to have the biggest impact and the most dogs are going to benefit. So there's kind of that kind of duality between, you know, raising awareness about the science, but also the fact we want it to be totally inclusive of everyone. Great. So thank you so much, guys, for coming on the show today. It's great to have you both here in person as well. It's great to be here. Thank yeah, you. Thanks so much. Wish you best of luck. Thank thanks. you. <laughs> See you later. See you. <laughs> Bye.